turns out that Google actually watches my videos, or at least I'd like to think that they do. If you remember back when we were taking apart the Google Pixel 7 Pro, I said this about the charging port. With its vibrant blue rubber ring around the opening. I think the whole phone should be that color next time. And here we are with the whole phone being made the exact same color. Coincidence? I think not. So thank you, Google, for watching my videos, and I think you made a fantastic choice with the color. This might come as a shock to some of you, but the holidays are coming up fast, and the best gift you can get your small business is Stamps.com. Stamps.com has been one of my favorite channel sponsors for a while now, and not just because they give up to 84% discounts on UPS and USPS, but because I can access UPS and USPS right from my home computer anytime, no waiting and no lines, day or night. Which means I have no waiting to ship out my stuff, and there's less waiting to receive the stuff that I've shipped out. We still have a nice cushion of time before the holidays actually get here, but I'm shipping out as many Ground X bunker shirts between videos as I can. Getting that thing in the ground is a massive undertaking, but luckily shipping doesn't have to be. You can schedule pickups, buy shipping supplies, and Stamps.com even automatically provides the fastest and cheapest shipping options. It's been indispensable for myself and a million other small businesses for the last 25 years. Head over to stamps.com slash jerryrig for a four-week trial, free postage, and free five-pound digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts, just how we like it. All you need is a computer and a printer, and you can even take care of orders on the go with the stamps.com mobile app. Stamps.com slash jerryrig. Now it's time to take apart the Google Pixel 8 Pro to see if there's any other Easter eggs inside, or see if we get a preview of the next color of the Google Pixel 9 Pro, with the rubber around the charging port. Never know, let's get started. Google is quite a bit different than the other Android manufacturers these days. Instead of opening up their phone from the back, this Pixel 8 Pro gets opened up from the front, screen side. Normally this spells disaster for the screen since it's near impossible to remove without damaging, but broken screens are also the most common smartphone repairs, so I'm fine with it. Google has committed to selling replacement parts through iFixit for the next seven years. So not only are we getting software security updates, but also consistent hardware support. That's a massive pledge, and I applaud Google for actually taking their longevity promises seriously. Looks like my screen has indeed been successfully separated from the body and I can flip it entirely around to function from the back of the phone. Kind of like how the old Windows phones used to operate. May they rest in peace. The screen has no screws holding it in place, just a whole lot of watertight adhesive, and a little spring latch holding down the Lego-style ribbon connector. There is another long ribbon cable running down the length of the phone. This heads up to the 5G antenna in the upper corner. We also have a rather large and thick graphite sticker over the top of the battery. Apparently this is to help move heat away from the circuit boards and radiate it up and out through the center of the super thin Actua display. There are 10 T4 screws holding down a thick metal mid plate, two of which are hidden down near the charging port under a thin clear piece of plastic. This metal mid plate is here for a few reasons. One, it adds a whole lot of strength to the phone. And two, it's holding the haptic vibrator motor. And since they are adhered together, it spreads the vibrations out through the whole phone. And three, it acts as a thermal heatsink for the processor. It's at this point in the teardown where we can remove the battery, or attempt to at least. With the battery unplugged, there is a nice little notice that says to read the manual and follow instructions. I don't know where this supposed manual might be, but there are numbers, one, two, and three, that appear as I open the flap. I assume this diagram near the number three is either a USB-C port that's happy to see me, or I'm supposed to slice through the adhesive under the battery like an 18th century lumberjack. The person who designed this system has obviously never removed a battery in their entire life, and is probably entirely separate from the person who sources the ultra-strong adhesive. Using this method would take nearly the entire seven-year lifespan of the phone to get that battery out. I feel like the guy on TikTok who cut through that log with a plastic knife. Personally, I don't have seven years to waste on this fool's errand, so we're using alcohol, which dissolves the adhesive and makes a mess. 
Not ideal, but it works. I still prefer the magic pull tabs that both Apple and Samsung are now using to secure their batteries. Google is just behind the times. Anyway, the battery is 5,050 milliamp hours. The lower loudspeaker can come out at this point. This has a translucent blue sticker over the foam balls inside, as well as an orange rubber ring around the speaker opening, which when combined with the waterproofing mesh over the speaker hole, we get our IP6A water resistance rating. The front facing camera has a rather long Lego style ribbon connector and is a 10.5 megapixel with no optical image stabilization. In the far left corner, there is a small metal bar holding our 5G millimeter wave antenna. And normally these are just like a rectangle, but it looks like Google has made this one bi-directional with antennas pointing up through the aluminum frame and out the back panel at the same time. Kind of cool. The long singular camera block is held in with two screws and spans the entire width of the phone. We have our 50 megapixel main camera on the left, which does have OIS. The 48 megapixel wide angle camera in the center does not have OIS. And the 48 megapixel 5x telephoto camera on the right does have optical image stabilization just on the inside. With the SIM card tray removed, we can take another gander at where the thermal foam rests up against the processor on the motherboard to transfer heat up and out through the screen. After removing one more screw from the side of the frame, the motherboard itself can come up and away from the foam. And there you have it. The rubber on this 30 watt USB-C charging port is the same brilliant bay blue as the back of the phone, and the same bay blue color that we saw on the charging port last year. It is soldered in place though and not easily repairable. The upper loudspeaker has the same translucent blue balls that the lower speaker had. The last thing I want to get a good look at, which is unique to this Pixel 8 Pro, is the rear-facing thermometer. Google says this guy should be able to read the temperature of humans at some point, but they do not yet have FDA clearance. Personally, I don't think that the clearance has as much to do with the hardware capabilities of the thermometer, but more about how Google is going to keep that medical data HIPAA compliant. It is pretty cool looking though, sitting below the dual LED flash, the four little dots are able to check the temperature of objects that are within two inches of the phone, about a thumbs distance away, thumbs up for that. If I had to pick the most aesthetically pleasing internal aspect of this phone though, it would be the 23 watt wireless charger. There's just something magical about the way the copper coils can transport energy through thin air. If you enjoy seeing this internal magic like I do, and wish the insides of your phone were on the outsides like I do, there's always my teardown skin. I'll leave a link down in the description. We cover pretty much every single popular smartphone. I'm going to leave the top skin off of this device though since Google's blue is pretty fire. Besides the Fairphone 5, there is no perfectly repairable smartphone out there. But it does seem to me that every major smartphone manufacturer is making incremental improvements each year to get us to a more repairable and sustainable place. Apple with their repairable back glass, Samsung with their battery pull tabs, and Google now with their seven years worth of hardware support. Out of the three main players though, I do think that Google with this Pixel 8 Pro and their replacement parts available through iFixit is taking repairability the most serious, at least from a consumer standpoint, even if their battery process is primitive. With the screen back on, everything appears to be working great, love to see it. Nice work Google. What color do you think we should tell Google to make their phone next year? I think transparent would be a winner. Let them know down in the comments and thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.